QuickBooks Online 2023, make amortization tables to support our loan balance and loan payments. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We also have the free QuickBooks Online sample company open. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window, search in the search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive to open the sample company. We're gonna be using the sample company to look at the difference between the accounting view, the view Get Great Guitars file is in, and the business view, the view the sample company is in. If you'd like to toggle back and forth between the two views, you could use the cog up top and switch between the views on down below. So we're gonna duplicate some tabs to put reports in, go into the tab up top, right click to duplicate it, and then we'll right click again and duplicate it again. Let's go back to the middle tab and open up the reports like we do every time. And we wanna be opening up, this time I'm on the standard reports, the favorite balance sheet. If you were on the business view, by the way, then it would be under the business overview and then the reports on the left there. Then let's tab to the right. We're going to open up the income statement, reports on the left, income statement, P&L, profit and loss, closing up the ham boogie. We're now in month two. So you could use the same full range, which goes from 01, 01, 23 to 12, 31, 23, uh, and see this includes month one's data or possibly let's run it this way this time. Let's go from 010123 to 0228. Uh, 2328, I think. <laughs> 23. Run that. And so we have January and February. And then I can use my little drop down here and say that I want to see it on a month by month breakout. So that gives us a nice tool. I'm going to run it because we're going to be working on February. So this will show us January numbers and February numbers and then the total for January and February, which is quite nice. Tabbing to the middle, closing up the hamburger. Now for, for uh, the balance sheet, we could do the same thing, but we probably don't really need to. I'm just gonna go from 01, uh, 0123 to 12, 12, 31, 23, because this is gonna show the balance for the year to date in essence. And because we're not doing an accumulation report, which is showing where we stand at a particular point in time, we're probably good with just the end result numbers. So now the first part of month number two, February, second month of data input, we're gonna first start with some transactions that are a little bit more unusual than the day-to-day -day transactions. So if I hit the plus button up top, these items in here represent in essence the day-to-day -day transactions. And we talked last month mainly about transactions that we tried to focus more on a cash-based system. In other words, we didn't enter bills, for example, too much. We used the expense and check forms to make payments. Now we're going to do more focusing on accrual transaction like bills. And we're going to start off thinking about some transactions with regards to our financing on the loans. How are we going to deal with the payments of the loans? So that's what we're going to talk about here. So down below, we put some loans on the books. So here's, we've got our loans. Now there's a couple issues with dealing with loans. One, there could be an issue between a short-term portion of the loan and a long-term portion of the loan. How are we gonna break those two out? My suggestion is that we try to put them into one account. I put them as a current loan, even though there might be a long-term portion to it. 
and then break out the current and long-term portion periodically with adjusting entries done either by us, the bookkeeper or business owner, or periodically at the end of the year or month by the accountant or CPA firm for taxes or financial statement uh, reporting purposes. So that's one issue that we'll talk about. And then number two, we've got an issue of what if I have multiple loans? Should I put multiple loans in one account here for loan payable or multiple accounts of loan payables? For that, from a bookkeeping standpoint, I think it's easiest to have one account for each loan so that you can tie out the loan directly to its amortization table, or you can have a CPA do that at the end of the year. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in, uh, in future presentations. Uh, right now, we'll just be dealing with this one loan that's in one account. If we have multiple loans, that's when it becomes an issue. Some businesses have multiple loans because they finance things, say like equipment, for example, for a construction company. And then number three, uh, what happens when I make a loan payment? It's not as easy as many other transactions, which only really have two accounts affected oftentimes, such as when I pay the utility bill, I decrease the checking account and I put it to utilities expense. When I pay down a loan, I'm going to be decreasing the cash account. And then you would think the other side would just go to loan payable, but we also have the rent on the loan, which is called interest, interest expense. So now three accounts are impacted. That complicates things a bit, but it gets even more complicated because the breakout between the interest and the principal per payment will differ from payment to payment even though the amount that we're paying in cash remains the same. That makes it difficult for us to automate the transaction, to use the bank feeds, to basically try to make the transaction automatic. So how can we deal with that? There's a couple different ways we can deal with that. We could try, one way is we could try to stay in a cash-based system and automate our whole process by saying, I'm on the bookkeeping side, I'm gonna do things on a cash-based system. I'm not gonna recognize interest expense, but just record it to the loan payable and then use your accountant or yourself at the end of the month and the year and do adjusting entries to the amortization table. That makes that allows you to automate everything and then just make period adjustments possibly at the end of the year when you do your tax returns. Or we can get the amortization table and every time we enter the transaction, we have to make the adjustment between interest and principal in accordance with the amortization table. To do that, we're going to need an amortization table. Now, when we get a loan, uh, sometimes they'll give us the amortization table, but they might just give us the terms of the loans and not give us the amortization table. The main thing that the loan negotiator will be focusing on is the payment that you'll be making. And you got to be careful because the other important thing is the interest, how much you're actually paying how much you're financing over the over the period of time. So it's best to see that by making an amortization table. So how can you make an amortization table? There are some tools online. If you just search a Google search for an amortization table, you can use the data to build one. I like just doing it in Excel and possibly using those online tools to double check the amortization table that we're gonna be putting together. So that's what we'll do now. And I think it's a useful tool just to build an amortization table because then you can see what I'm talking about with some of these problems between interest and principal, short-term and long-term. It'll be more clear if you're familiar with an amortization table. When you just look at one, it, it's overwhelming because the, it's, there's just too many numbers. So if you build one, then it's actually not too difficult and then you kind of understand it better. So I'm gonna build one even though it's not an Excel course in Excel so we can see how it works. So I'll do this fairly quickly because I know it's not an Excel course, but this will be this is what we'll use then to record our payments. Okay, so I'm just gonna make up a loan terms here. So I'm scrolling in a bit. First thing I do is I sort the whole page to be the format that I want. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select the triangle, right click, format the whole thing to, I like to choose currency, bracketed numbers, and then we'll say, I'll keep the we'll dollar sign, let's take that off and we'll keep the decimals this time and let's say, okay. I'll also make it bold so it'll stand out hopefully in a video format fairly well. All right, so then we've got the loan. I'm gonna say the loan 
amount, let's say is 72,000. So that's the amount, amount of the loan. I'm gonna make up the amortization table as of basically this point in time going forward. And currently we have the liability on the books at that 72,000. So I know we, we actually had a couple transactions to make that 72,000, but we're imagining at this time 72,000 and we're gonna start the loan amortization table from there. Years, let's say the years are five years on the loan. Now, if they give the years, oftentimes it's gonna be broken out into monthly payments if it's a standard installment note. So if it's five years, 12 months in a year, we're gonna say this equals, I'm gonna go up one five times, I'm just gonna hard code 12. That's a two, 12, 60 months, 60 months, five years. Okay, and then the rate, now usually, this is where it gets a little tricky, the rate is represented in terms of yearly rate meaning it's gonna be 0.05 or 5%. I'm gonna make that a percent by going to the home tab numbers percent. And that means 5% a year usually, unless it's specified otherwise. But when we do the amortization table, we're really using kind of like the monthly rate to, for each payment, but we don't usually say the monthly rate because the monthly rate is gonna be quite low. So the yearly rate is the convention that we'll usually use to say a rate but if you hear a rate that's not in the range of like a, a whole number, right? If it's like 0.0325, th then they broke it down into something other than a yearly rate. So for example, if I, this is the rate, uh, this I'm gonna say year, and this is gonna be the rate per month, per period that we're using, which would be equal to, equal to 5% divided by 12. And if I make that a percent, and I add a couple decimals. So now it, they're, they could say, well, it's, the rate is 0.417. Yeah, but that's the monthly rate. We don't usually think in monthly rates. We think in like the yearly rate, right? So, so just that's something that's a little bit tricky when you think about these loans. And then the payment that we're gonna make, the whole goal of the loan is to make the payment be the same. And the way we have to do that is to adjust the interest and principal portions of the payment typically. Now there's a payment function here that we can we can use to calculate this. So I'm just gonna do this fairly quickly. I'm gonna say a negative instead of equals. That's what I usually do to flip the sign. Otherwise you'll get a negative number. And then I'm just gonna type in PMT payment. This is our payment function. And then I'm just gonna enter in according to this little thing down here, the payment function. So it's gonna be the rate. I usually choose the yearly rate, but I could take the monthly rate I usually don't put the monthly rate, I just have the yearly rate, and then I'm gonna take that and divide it by 12. Meaning if that's the yearly rate, I've gotta break it down into its monthly rate component because I'm making payments on a monthly basis, not a yearly basis. Or I could just put the monthly rate, which is this one here, comma, and then the number of periods is gonna be not five years, but 60. I could have done the same thing. I could take the five times uh, 12, or just take the 60 that I broke out in months here, comma and then the present value is the current amount of the loan which is 72,000. That's all we really need. So I'm going to close up the brackets and there's the payment. So there's our payment amount. If you break out your loan like this, then you can then you can start to experiment on your own and put in up here, well what if I had 60,000 or something and you can adjust your payment. What if the rate was 4% and you can start playing with this. Now, you can also play with this Inversely, you can figure out what the loan balance is using a present value calculation or what the rate would be giving everything else being constant. Now, let's just take a quick look at some tools online to do that. So if I went online, so I typed in like amortization calculator here. And then if I search into some of these, most of them are for like home loans, but, but you can have a, a loan amortization. And let's say we had 72,000 in this one and the rate was 5% number of payments we're going to say was 60 and we're going to say they're monthly and so there we're going to go ahead and calculate and so if we calculate that then we get the information five percent 60 uh the total payments add up to this amount for all the payments and then you've got your payment which is the one three five eight seven three so that's what we have here one three five eight seven three one, three, five, eight. So I kind of like to double check it with those amortization uh, tables. And then of course, if you do want to calculate total payments, 
So what are you going to totally pay over the life of this thing? It's going to be equal to your payments times the 60 payments that we're going to make. And then if you want to think total interest, interest that you're going to make over and above the loan amount, it's going to be this amount of total payments minus the loan. So we're going to have interest of 9,523 over the life of this thing. If you talk to a finance person, they're going to focus just on this number. You're a little bit concerned at, with this number, this number, and how long you, the loan's going to be as well are factors that you want to take the time to move away from the loan advisor and think on yourself critically uh, before you go into anything. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. And then this is going to be our headers, months, payments. Let's actually do, I'm act I can actually do years, months, and let's say payments, interest, and I'm going to call it loan reduction. Now notice a little trick in Excel reduction or a little thing to keep aware of. That's too long, really. So I could either make this cell quite wide if I have a long header or... I could wrap it, home tab, alignment, and wrap, but that makes everything else kind of long. Uh, and it, do it doesn't show me where I want to make the break, like it guess is pretty good. I, but in any case, the way I like to do it here, if I'm not making this into a table, is to delete this part and just put reduction in its own cell. And then I'm gonna pull all these down. I'm gonna cut them and paste them right there so that then I can make it look like a header by selecting these and make it formatted as a header. F home tab, font group, I'm gonna make this black and white, and then I'm gonna center it. So now that looks like a header even though it's on you know two, two lines there, and that, that doesn't mess up anything to the right or left of the table we're working on. Okay, so now we'll just do our calculations. I'm gonna put the months in first. I'm gonna go from 0, zero month, one, two, and then I'm going to select those set, those three cells, put my cursor on this fill handle, and drag down to 60 periods. So you can see the counter. So it's quite easy to do because it gives me the counter. There's down to 60 periods right there. I'm also going to get rid of the decimals. Number group don't need the decimals. So I'm going to take those off and I'm going to center it here. Now there's a little trick that you can kind of figure out the years on this side because it's useful to know uh, the year that we're in as well. So let's let's do it with this cell right here and try to say, I want all of these to represent the fact that I'm in year one. So everything that's in year one, I wanna, I wanna have shown as a one over here and that makes it so I can actually make tables out of this if I wanted to, because I wanna know which year I'm in as opposed to the month I'm in, which can be a little tricky when we get down to later parts of the table. So one way you can do that as you can say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is equal to the month, and then I'm going to divide it by 12. Well, well, let's do it this way. I'm going to say round, round up, and then bracket. So I'm going to round up tr to the whole number. I'm going to take the month that I'm in and then divide it by 12. So that'll give me a fraction of a number but I'm gonna round it up to the whole number. So then comma, the number that I need to round up to is gonna be negative 0.01. And that just that just tells the, the system which unit, uh, wh where we wanna round to, which is gonna be a whole number. So I'm gonna say brackets, that gets a little bit tricky, you kinda gotta just know that, but I'm gonna say, okay. And then if I copy that and I put my cursor on the fill handle, just to test it, if I take it down to like uh, 13 payments, there's there's number two, right? So it looks like it's working here because that's a new year. So if I take this all the way down, so there it is, year five. So that looks about right. So there's the years that we're in. I'm gonna take off the decimals here. I'm gonna center it. And then I'm gonna put a zero up top as well. Okay, so then the loan uh, the loan re I have the loan reduction and I need one more thing here, which is the loan balance. So I'm going to say, let's, I'm going to make this black, white, and center it. Okay, so then the loan balance is going to start with equal 
I'm going to take this from my data set. This is common practice when you're building these tables because then they can change automatically as you change the tables and you can make your estimates on that if you want to kind of think about your loan. So let's make this one a little bit smaller. I'm going to double click on it. And this one, I'm going to double click here. Okay, so then the payments are always going to be the same. They're going to be equal to this 135873. But the interest in principal, you could call this principal. I always spell it wrong. So I just call it loan reduction because there's like two principles. And they look, I, no matter what I do, I just can't get it in my head what the difference is. So I just say loan reduction. So people don't get, don't call me stupid. So now let's go, let's say this is going to be equal to the $72,000 and then times. And then we could take the rate, which is the 5%, but that's a yearly rate. So I have to divide it by 12, or I could have just taken the monthly rate that I calculated here. So that's going to be then interest. That's the interest we're going to have to pay. The loan reduction is going to be equal to the payment minus the interest. The interest is like rent on your apartment or whatever, right? It's gone. You know, it's not going to reduce the loan. It's just rent for the usage. So this is going to be the amount that reduces the loan. Therefore, we've got the loan balance minus the loan reduction. Now I could copy all this down but it's gonna cause a problem. So I wanna think about how can I make it so I can copy this down. I'm gonna select this whole thing, copy it down, and then look for the problems. What's the problem? This moved down, I don't want it to do that. Anything that's in my data set and not in my table, I usually have to make absolute. I have to tell Excel not to move it down because it's gonna to try to move down to relative references. This one uh, did, did what I wanted it to do here, but it moved this down and I want it to stay on 5%. This one, relative references looks good. This one, relative references looks good. So what I'm gonna do is delete this, double click on the payment. That one, I don't want it to move down. I'm gonna make what's called an absolute reference. I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the six. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute reference works. Dollar signs don't have any meaning towards dollars. It's just code for Excel to say, don't move the cell down. So if I do that, and then if I go to the interest, double clicking on that, that 5% outside of where I'm working, that's what I need to deal with. So I'm going to put my cursor in B4, F4, dollar sign before the B and for making it absolute. This one, I, I do want to move down. So I'm going to leave that. This one, both of these, I want them to move down relative. So that one's good. This one, both of these I want to move down relative because I don't have anything in my data set to the right. That's the general rule. Okay, so I'll select those four, put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it all the way down. If I get down to zero after the 60 months, it's probably good. Boom, so it looks like it did what I would expect. So that looks good. So then I can just put some formatting touches on this. I'll just select this whole thing and we can format it say like i'm gonna make this brackets something like that and then i could format these maybe put some brackets around that okay so the point is every time we make a payment the payment's the same but i'm gonna have to break out the interest and the loan reduction in two separate amounts so for example if i went back over to quickbooks here and by the way, you can double check your amortization schedule with this amortization schedule or one that you generate online to kind of see if you're, or you can just do it, you could do it online, but I think it's useful to do it in Excel. But then when you make a payment in here, let's say we're going to make a payment, it might come through the bank feeds that you make the payment and you still have to adjust it because of this issue with the interest and principal. So I could go in and say, okay, I'm going to do an expense form and then I'm going to reduce the checking account by category, but then you'd have to choose the category of interest, interest paid. And then the other category is going to be the loan payable. And these two amounts for interest paid and loan payable will differ each month. As we can see here, that means I can't automate the payment even if I had the bank feeds on, because it's it's going to get messed up, even though the payment is the same, I can't automate between where it's going to allocate on these two accounts. 
How could I get around that? Well, one, I could manually go in there each time I make a payment and adjust it. So I could do that. That's one method that we could use. Another method is that we just make all the payments uh, to the loan balance, which will make it incorrect because we're not accounting for interest. But then at the end of the year, give the CPA or have the CPA create an amortization schedule or your tax professional and then adjust the loan balance and the interest in accordance with the amortization table, right? And that way you can make everything on a cash based system and, and work with your network, your accountant to then break out the accrual components, making the data input fast and, and automatic and then making the periodic adjustments. So that might be an efficient way to do it. That's one way that you can do it. Now, if I look at the end of the first year here, the other issue is, is this, how do I break out the short term and long term portion of the loan, which again, I'm not going to break out right now, I'm going to break it out periodically at the end of the year, possibly if I need to. So in other words, right now, this amount is at 72,000. But short term loan payable is the amount that's going to be due within a year. So you might think, well, that would just be I'm going to pay within a year this amount times 12. But that's not really the short term portion of the loan because the short term portion of the loan doesn't include interest. The short term portion of the loan is this, the sum of the amount that you're going to pay for the loan through through the end of the year, which is going to be that. And so there's our there's the amount. Why don't I include the interest if I know I'm going to pay it as a liability that's short term because we haven't incurred it just like we haven't incurred the rent yet. We haven't incurred the interest on the so, so that gets a little bit a little bit tricky and then the long term portion would would of course be this minus this and or the amount after the 12 months that's where we'll be after 12 months now you can also make this into a nice if you want to see it on a year by year basis you can make a nice like little pivot table which usually you want to create zeros here to do that and i'll just show you how to do it real quick if i select these and i go down and say go down to five years and then insert a pivot table pivot table and then i'm going to put the pivot table in my worksheet so i'm going to put it right there so i'm not going to i'm going to put it in the existing worksheet and the location's going to be right there let me do that again hold on a second I'm going to choose this and then I'm going to say insert pivot table and then I want it in the existing worksheet and I'm going to put it right there and then add the pivot table. Now I'll do this fairly quick so I don't take forever on it but basically I'm just going to pull this stuff into the pivot table. I want the years but not the months. So I'm going to take everything but the months, payments, interest, reduction balance and uh, the balance. So now I've got uh, my data. I'm going to say that the the years I want as the rows. So I want to pull this one in the values to the to the rows. And there's basically my pivot table on like a year by year basis. So now you've got the sum of the payments for the year, the sum of the interest the sum of the reduction and, and so there's a little bit more formatting we need to do here so now i'm going to try to format this i'm going to hit the drop down here and say i want to i want to value look at the value of the fields and this is the sum of the payments so that looks right the sum is correct i'm going to take the number format and i'm going to make it currency bracketed numbers no dollar sign and we could probably, well, let's keep it at two decimals. We'll do that and say, okay. And then I'm going to do the same for this field, sum of the interest and say value field. The sum is what we want. So that's right on the interest, but I'm going to number format it and say currency bracketed, no dollar sign, two decimals. Okay. And then the, the sum of the reduction. So this is how much we paid off on the principal of the loan each year or will do and I can say the sum is correct number 
I want currency, bracketed, no dollar sign, two decimals. And this last one's a little bit different. I'm gonna say uh, value formatting. This one I want, I want it to give me the minimum number because I want to see where we are at the end of the period, the end of the year. So that one's a little bit tricky and I'm going to say number format. This is the same. And so there you go. And now, now this is something, the reason I want to show this is this is something that you can't really do with these online kind of uh, tools. And it could be a useful tool to do something like this. I'll just put some brackets in here because now you can see everything on a year by year breakout and see the, the payments that you're going to make on a year by year. And then you can see the interest that you would pay in year one versus year two versus year three, noticing it goes down. And then the principal that you would pay the reduction in the loan balance from year to year. In other words, if I was to take this minus this, there's our, our difference. These amounts, five, nine, four, five, oh, three, three should be the amount at the end of each year. There's the five, nine at the end of year one, year two, four, five, three, three, four, four, five, three, three, four. So you could do a lot more uh, with these customizations or possibly projecting on what loans you want to be doing. If you can get the loan amortization table or make it in Excel, then then using some of those online tools because this this little breakout can be quite useful. Okay, so that's the general idea. So in future presentations, we'll make some loan payments uh, based on the amortization schedule and show you how the payments uh, will look and how the, the, the balance then will tie into the amortization tables once we're done with it.